You guys know what's crazy? When a dispute that starts between fans somehow ends up pitting two artists against each other. In case you're not caught up, last week Sejong was on King of Mass Singer and during one of the segments, she sang some lines from a couple of different songs. And it was from this that sparked anger among, I would say mostly international fans for mocking those singers. A big portion of that anger was because fans believe she mocked Momo by imitating her voice and mispronouncing words on purpose. So with just that piece of context, or maybe you've even seen the clip, do you think that she mocked Momo or was being disrespectful? At first, there was a lot of back and forth. Defending Sejong, saying she wasn't being racist or making fun, it's just how the song sounds. Defending Momo because she's a foreigner in Korea, she's learning the language and her feelings should be considered before doing something like that. But somehow it just turned into this nasty, toxic Momo versus Sejong and who's better at what. Which if you're actually a fan of these girls, whichever one, even both, I don't think they would want you to pit them against each other like that. Look, do I believe that she had any bad intentions toward Momo while doing that? No. I mean, if you've watched her in the last Knowing Bros episode, she should know what it feels like to be disrespected. Now, should she have done it, hindsight 2020, probably not. It's hard to walk away from that not coming off disrespectful. Worst case scenario is if Momo perceived it in a disrespectful manner. And that's another thing. I think in order for us to truly get mad or not, we have to consider their relationship, their friendship. I don't think any of us really know how close they are with one another. These shows tend to have scripts or at least an outline. So how do we know Sejong did call up Momo and say, hey, I'm gonna do this, is that okay with you? We don't know. I think whether or not they're friends or have any kind of prior relationship is an aspect of it. For example, Nayeon copies the way Zui talks all the time. The way she pronounces words, the speed at which she talks, her monotoneness sometimes, but I never for a second see it as anything malicious. It actually makes me laugh and smile, not at Dewey's expense, but maybe because I know how much Nayeon loves her and their relationship. Same thing with Wendy when Yeri speaks English. Sorry, I mean Katie. Oh, and I've seen a lot of people bring up this scenario, which is another interesting angle to add on top of the relationship aspect. Well, what if people make fun of K-pop artists' accents when they're speaking English? Let's say when BTS comes to perform on Saturday Night Live this weekend, if someone on that cast imitates RM's accent without him knowing, for me, yeah, I would probably be upset and you guys would hear me talk about it the next day because I know there's no prior relationship between them for them to do that. Then again, I could be wrong about that. I don't know, there's a lot of ways to look at it and I totally understand both sides. Again, how do you guys see it? Is it different for you when Heechul does it in front of Momo? Is that even the same situation? Anyway, let's move on. Speaking of BTS coming to the States besides SNL, by the way, how cool is it that the host of SNL on the same night that BTS is performing is a genuine K-pop fan? Talk about serendipity, you know what I mean? Anyways, besides that, it looks like they'll probably attend the Billboard Music Awards in May for being nominated alongside GOT7 and EXO. Now the interesting thing about that is that if EXO attends the BBMAs, that could be the last time we see EXO as a full nine member group for a very long time. You guys have surely heard it by now, but with Shumin enlisting in the army next month, doesn't look like we're gonna get a full EXO comeback before then. Which means until they all come back from enlistment one by one, it's gonna be solos and subunits from here on out. The sad part about it is that if you think about their last promotion, even though the songs were really good, it seemed kind of rushed, they didn't even get to promote for a very long time, and they weren't really fully 9 either. And now there's not much of a chance for that visual of all 9 members on stage for years. I think SM could have handled this a bit better, especially if they knew he was going to enlist. Just something, anything for the fans before the long wait begins. Hopefully they do attend the BBMAs, performing or not, win or not, just so XOLs get to see them together, especially in a big setting. 
I don't know if Top Social Artist is an award that they present on stage, on TV, but how beautiful would it be if one of those three won? Yet they all come on stage and celebrate with each other. Not this group versus that group, but all of them on that stage, representing K-pop together. 